Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live today. It's Saturday, April the 13th, 2013. Our topic today is a new teacher community and chat. Our special guests today are Mesa Dobbs. Uh, she's joined along with her co mods as she calls them, Natasha Dunn, J.B. Vandercrift, and Dean Nance. And we're very excited that they could be with us. I was sending a shout out into the chat to Tammy Moore for her um, expertise and tremendous volunteerism with closed captioning so you can pass that on to your friends if they have a hearing impairment or English is not their first language. Also Lori Moffitt who is also our backup moderator and helps collect the questions and generally helps us out when things aren't going the way we'd like them to go and that has been great when we've been absent from the show. So thank you both to Tammy and Lori for being with us today. So we are having a lot of problems with people getting in and out. And I hope that I will stay f fine. And uh, you'll be hearing some pop-ups as uh, Peggy and Kim are trying to talk to me in the background. So those of you who may not have been to our show or have uh, not been aware of the live binder that we collect, and today we have a great uh, collection because it not only is it a link into the live binder that uh, we have today, as well as uh, uh, Lisa put together a great uh, collection of her links and resources into a live binder of her own, and it is tucked away into the Classroom 20 Live Binder. So, just a heads up to remind you that there are resources for Classroom 20 Live. So, if somewhere at the end of the show there's usually a pop up window with the survey uh, or a request for nominations for new teachers, um, future teachers, excuse me, you'll find all those links in the Classroom 20 Live Resources page. And a reminder that we do have a website, live.classroom20.com, and we always point you to the Archives and Resources page. What's so wonderful about that is that everything that happens today is on that page. So if you get knocked out, or if the people that you want to get in to join the session, can't get in, please send them to this page because we'll have the full Blackboard Collaborate recording along with uh, an MP3 file, an embedded video file so people can take that and uh, embed it into a video, into a blog post or an HTML page to share with others for professional development. We'll have the chat log as well that gets posted in there. And we do double duty. Not only do you find the link to the live binder, you will find a link to all the resources that are shared today. And we just give you a heads up. If in the chat we found that someone has a great example that is um, a complement to today's show, we end up grabbing that link and put it in, into the blog post as well as into the live binder. So I see Jamie has joined us in the room, but she's still having a bit of problem with uh, audios. And, uh, We'll just let her work through that. See if you could run the wizard, please, Jamie, and, and see if that helps you out, which is in the top panel, the audio video panel on the right hand. There's a little blue microphone with a red starburst. So give that a, a try. So activity. For those of you who don't know where the laser pointer is, I'm going to direct you to the whiteboard tools on the left-hand side. And the second icon down is the starburst. If you can hold on to that and drop it into the map where you're located, it would be great. It's always good to see uh, the cross-section across the, the world uh, where we are networking together and sharing our expertise and questions. So I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada. Peggy's, Peggy, excuse me, is in Phoenix, Arizona, and Kim is in San Antonio, Texas. And they're still chatting out there on the outside that they can't get in on any device. So this is going to be an interesting show um, as we proceed. So we had fun with the map. We're going to put you to some more where we have some poll questions. So we're still going to ask you to keep that starburst going. And can you answer our first poll question about placing yourself on the continuum? Uh, are you a new teacher, one to five years, somewhat experienced? There's your time span, time span five to ten, very experienced, ten to twenty. And if you're retired and just supporting teachers in another way, then drop on, on as well. And if you know any time these tools don't work for you, the voting doesn't work for you, just type it in the chat. We can pick it up there as well. So we have a good spread of uh, expertise today. Thanks. We're going to move on to our next poll question, which is, have you participated in any Twitter chat? So to vote, it's the right, far right icon just below your name. If you click on it and you select the yes or no. And 
and I'll post the results in just a few minutes, wait for people to get a chance to vote. Again, it's a little icon to the right on your underneath your name. Just click on it you get to get that drop down menu. And if that's not working, we always said type it in the chat. I'm going to publish the results to the whiteboard. Let's see what we have. Some people are not having a chance to vote for us, but uh, we have quite a few people um, crew today who are who have participated in Twitter chat. So that will help you focus your, some of your presentation. Moving on to question number two, three. Uh, do you serve as a mentor or coach for teachers? So it's a green check if it's yes and a red X says no. So go ahead and vote. Let's see what the results are. Quite a few coaches in the room and mentors. Terrific. And I know who will be looking forward to hearing your stories. And I don't think I went through, so if someone's new to the show, that we will have question and answer period near the end of the show. So feel free to share your ideas in the chat. And if we have an opportunity for questions or sharing at the end, we will be giving open mic time. Uh, just a request, if you're going to come to the mic, that please have a USB headset on um, and run your audio setup with her so that we're not going to have uh, some audio problems as we get started. And remember, if nothing's working for you, the chat usually does. So post any ideas and comments and questions there, please. That's it for our uh, activity for you today. I'm just going to <coughs> get myself prepared because my experts are not in the background. So you're not going to see any links dropping in for a little while until I get myself set up. But this is my opportunity again to talk about our show today being about new teacher community chat and my um, opportunity to introduce Lisa Davis for her for you. She is an education and consultant, a resident blogger, social media marketing team support, and group admin at edutopia.org. She is the innovator of the weekly new teacher Twitter chat and helps to foster strategies for teachers new to the profession to engage in community design to strengthen their teaching practice. And she blogs about her support to new and pre-service teachers at teachingwithsoul.com. There's a lot more that um, we're going to learn about Lisa and her co-moderators. So I'm going to give the microphone to Lisa now and uh, ask her if you wouldn't mind starting with our first newbie question. And then I know you're going to take the opportunity to introduce the rest of your team. So your newbie question is, where should new teachers start when they want to find a mentor or build a PLN? So welcome, Lisa. It's all yours. So don't forget to turn your mic off. On, and I'll turn mine off. Hi, Larda, and hello, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here today, and it's so great to have um, so many of you who are interested and who care about supporting and mentoring new teachers joining us. And um, thank you, Lorna, for that great introduction. And of course, of all times, we've waited so long to join Classroom 2.0 Live that we should have these struggles with our um, bandwidth and whatnot is just too funny. But hopefully, we'll be able to come back um, in the future. And I'm so grateful also to have um, uh, three of my monthly co-mods with me, Natasha, uh, Jamie and Dean, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later. <clears throat> but this first question is very important because I really believe that the power of social media to support and mentor new teachers is something that we can no longer ignore. And so the question of why, where should new teachers start when they want to find a mentor or build a PLN, in my time as a new teacher, I really think that we were very limited to, um, and maybe some of you have the same experience, to those that are around us in our school building. But now, with the, the onset of social media, and you know, we're talking about this via Twitter, via Facebook, Google+, and Ning communities, for example, there is a huge opportunity now for new teachers who might be somewhat isolated or feel somewhat isolated to find a mentor beyond just their school building. So what I want to say is that the first thing I think new teachers should do is if they are 
in a school building or they are uh, still connected to their um, community of, of higher education, that would probably be the best place to start and to have a face-to-face -face mentor, someone that could guide you, walk you through, be there to be that shoulder for you when you need that, to come alongside you because really that's what a mentor does. But at the same time, I really believe that new, new teachers should begin to harness the power of social media, even if it's just starting with Facebook, to find people that are there, that are educators in different communities, for example, on Facebook that could support you. For example, we have a new teacher chat Facebook community, and I post um, things of interest, I post resources, I post opportunities to connect with our mentor community, which I will share in a little bit there. And so I really think that's a good place to start because most new teachers are pretty comfortable with using Facebook. And beyond Facebook, I think that once you connect to somebody there, for example, they might be able to guide you into other communities. For example, we have opened a community in Google Plus, and if you have a Gmail, it's really easy to go into a Google Plus community, and in our case, it's for new teachers, and I'll share that in a little bit. And also, beyond that, there are Ning sites that can also support new teachers. Now, so far, there isn't a Ning site that's specifically for new teachers. But one that I would recommend is uh, the EDU PLN Ning site, which is uh, a community of many, many educators who are very in tune with social media and how that can support not only a new teacher, but experienced teachers and administrators as well. But within that um, EDU PLN Ning site, we have a new teacher mentoring community, again, which I'll share in a little bit, that you might want to consider sending a new teacher to or if you are a new teacher, you might want to consider looking there. And that's another great place uh, to join, which isn't really too stressful. It's not too difficult. It's very similar to how Facebook works. And again, most new, te new teachers know how Facebook works. And so that's another good place to do that. And while you're connecting, say, on Facebook or on Google+, Plus or in an insight, then you can begin to dialogue with some of those folks there on how to build a PLN, which in, in our case we call that a personal learning network or a professional learning network or a passionate learning network, as Shelly Terrell, one of my good friends um, on Twitter, likes to share. And what that personal learning network can do for you is huge. Beyond just supporting you as a new teacher in your pedagogy and your lesson planning, the PLN that you build on Facebook in an insight on Google Plus, and then hopefully getting the courage to transition to Twitter will just be a resource that you will never, ever be able to put down. The power of building a professional learning network outside of your building, outside of a face-to-face -face mentor, outside of a university of higher ed or, or those colleagues that you have there is going to be absolutely fantastic. And one of the things that I really believe the power of a social media PLN is that it is international. I'm so excited to see uh, Shambles here with us from Thailand, and I, I'm hoping that there are some other international folks here. And of course, uh, one of my monthly comrades, Natasha, is from Ontario, Canada, and of course, Lorna is from Canada as well. But the power of that is it really pushes us beyond our classroom walls. It pushes us beyond our community. Um, wherever that might be in the United States, and it supports us to engage and see that all across the country and around the world, there are new educators struggling with some of the same things that you might be struggling with. How do you write a lesson plan that you really feel is engaging? How do you work with classroom management, which really seems to be the biggest issue that new teachers struggle with? And you don't have to be alone as you're looking to get support for that. And as you begin to connect in that network that you build, again, be it on Facebook or a name site or on, uh, on Google+, Plus, or hopefully you'll be excited after this presentation to, to join a, a personal learning network and join us on Twitter, it's just going to really, as we say, rock your world. And as you do that, you're going to find that utilizing social media, and I'm really going to add one more piece to that, and that's, that's blogs. 
it's going to open up your view of what you're capable of doing as an educator and more importantly, what you're capable of leading your students to do in the area of um, expanding their world. And so long answer to this important question, but we're going to talk more briefly about that in this time that we have together as I go through the presentation with you. So great question. And I'm sure that some of you might be scratching your heads and, and saying, you know, I'm not really sure what she's talking about, but I'm, I'm hoping that through the presentation you'll feel more confident uh, about it. So let me share a little bit with you all about how I began to develop um, New Teacher Chat. And if you're on Twitter, you're probably very familiar with chats, but if you're not, that's not a problem. And hopefully as we talk today, you'll feel more comfortable about the idea of joining chats on Twitter. But a few years ago, I was um, a school principal, and I did that for um, 14 years. I was also the director of a federally funded uh, project, uh, a literacy project uh, to be exact. And um, after doing that work as a principal and, and a, an admin um, for 19 years, I was invited to join a team of educational consultants through Kaplan Educational Corporation. And I thought that that was fantastic because I was really ready to branch out beyond um, the school building. And although I did have some dreams at one point of becoming a superintendent, I really felt like I could really do much more work in terms of connecting with people in more of a coaching setting. So I joined Kaplan Educational Corporation and was working as a coach um, of teachers, but also new teachers in South Central Los Angeles because I am from uh, Southern California. And um, in the time when the economy uh, began to tank, and that was around 2008-2009, Los Angeles Unified School District, which was employing our great team of nine coaches, including our director, decided to close the doors on any outside consultancy. And so what that really forced me to do was to decide, was I going to go back to the classroom? Was I going to go back to seeking a, an admin position? Or was I going to have the courage to venture out on my own, as I'm sure um, Jamie can uh, attest to how that feels, because uh, we've had some conversations about that. So I decided to jump out on my own. During that year that I was uh, working as a coach in South Central, I joined Twitter, and that was in January of 2009. And I had kind of let it go dormant during the time that I was doing my work, because I wasn't really sure if I wanted to continue with Twitter, and was it really going to be valuable to the work I was doing. And in late 2009, as I'm looking to begin to build my own consultancy, I get back into Twitter. And one of the first people that I found as I'm researching how educators can join Twitter and really make it meaningful and powerful, and again, this is late 2009, I found Shelly Terrell. And um, Shelly Terrell was posting a, a blog at the time on Twitter, and her blog looks very different now than it did then. And she was asking if there were any administrators who would like to respond to a question that she had um, on her blog piece. And I said, well, I'm a former administrator. I'm going to do that. And, and keep in mind that blogs are also very much a part of social media, because the idea of being social in a blog is when you comment in the blog piece, then that's how you connect with the writer and perhaps other people that are also reading that blog piece. So I commented on her blog, and we immediately connected. Now, at this time, she was still in Germany, but she had also begun to launch EdChat with her team, which includes um, Stephen Anderson and Tom Whitby. And so I began to join EdChat, and she pulled me in and began to really support me and promote me on Twitter. And she really was my first mentor on Twitter, and I'm forever grateful to her for that, and we continue to talk and laugh about that because we have never actually met in person, even though we have been connected for now um, over three years. And in these conversations that I began to have with her as she supported me to develop my um, Twitter personal learning network, we actually began to converse about chats and the power of chats on Twitter as Twitter was really beginning to gain steam. And I asked her, I said, well, Shelly, this is a great chat, but it's huge. How would a new educator feel about getting into um, Ed Chat? And she's, you know, she kind of said, well, you know, they have to just jump in. So I asked if there was a Twitter chat for new teachers, and she said no. And so that is how 
Twitter chat, uh, NT chat begin. We had a four hour conversation over Skype while she was still in Germany. And she really took the time in those four hours, believe it or not, to deeply support me as I had question after question with her of how to set up a chat that could be not only vibrant and engaging, but ongoing. I didn't want it to be one of those chats that some of us who are active on Twitter, we see that the chat launches and then it falls apart and, and it uh, goes away. And, and that's really sometimes very disappointing to people who have come to love that chat. So she helped me to develop um, all of the questions that I had in terms of how to keep the chat vibrant, how to make it appealing, how to um, archive the chat, how to use at that time we had what the hashtag, which was really great about supporting us to archive our chat. And so that is how New Teacher Chat was born. It was born with the support of a mentor, and in this case it was Shelly Terrell, who knew a lot about chat in terms of how she had set up a chat. And beyond that, I also had begun to connect with I'm building my consultancy on Facebook, which I really wasn't a fan of, with um, a fabulous woman, and that's Betty Ray, and she's uh, at Edutopia Betty on Twitter. And she um, posted on Facebook, was there anybody interested in working with their new teacher community on edutopia.org? Because the person that was monitoring that place, uh, that community was going to leave. So in the, the, the um, opportunities to do that, I connected with Betty Ray as well. She and I just hit it up fantastically. She uh, hired me, if you will, to moderate the new teacher community on edutopia.org. And through that conversation as well, she began to dialogue with me about the importance of bringing in new teachers, conducting them to our edutopia community. And she was also very pivotal in supporting me to launch my chat, which launched in um, May of 2010. And so that is how New Teacher Chat was born. And I really believe that it's important for all of you who are here today to know that because my dedication to this and that of my, my new monthly co-mods who are joining me is huge. And the power to be able to create a chat which can be engaging and vibrant but also sustained and now in May of 2013, that'll be three years, is very important. So as you consider joining us and consider sharing our chat with your newbies, I want you to know that this is a chat that has been developed very deeply and, and something that is very heartfelt to me. And as I'm talking about my monthly co-mod, I'm going to just share with you a little bit about them. And when three of them are here today, I'm going to have them share a little bit more about themselves. But what I want to share with you is um, that I have uh, four monthly co-mods, and I'm so grateful to them for volunteering their time to join me. And Natasha Dunn is um, a fabulous fifth grade teacher in Ontario, Canada. Derek Keenan, who isn't going to be able to be with us today, uh, but I'm also very grateful to him. He is also from Canada, and he is an English teacher there. Jamie Vandergrift, who I'm so happy has decided to join us as a monthly co-mod, is a fabulous educational technology specialist, and she's going to share a little bit more about what she does. And I know that she has a new consultancy, and I'm so excited for her in that regard. And she does a fabulous uh, um, Google Hangout with a group of women in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, which I'm hoping she'll talk a little bit about when we get a chance to hear from her. And then Dean Mance, who has been with me also, as Natasha has from the beginning, um, very committed, very caring about what I'm doing with new teachers, but has finally um, agreed to join me monthly um, uh, when he can to Comod. And Dean is an educational technology specialist. He is a DEN star, and he'll talk a little bit about himself as well. And I'm so grateful to have um, these folks joining me because 99% of the time that I've been doing the teacher chat over the last three years, I have been alone. So thank you so much to my comments for joining me. And I'm so happy to have um, three of them here with me today. Now, as I talk about, and I have talked about a little bit on using social media to mentor, I want to begin to share with you um, some of the resources that I developed, and then we're going to hear from Natasha in just a few minutes. So bear with me, and I'm hoping everybody can see. I'm going to share a little bit about the resources that I've developed for New Teacher Chat. So I'm going to do uh, a tour, an application share with you. Let me know if you can see it. Did you quick start sharing yet, Lisa? Hold on. <laughs> OK. 
coming through okay. now. Thanks. Can you see that? Great. Okay. So these resources are going to be available to you thanks to, to Peggy and Lorna and uh, the Classroom 2.0 live team. But I'm going to just go through them um, quickly so that you can see what I've developed over the years. And many thanks to, to Dean and the Live Binders gals for introducing me to Live Binders uh, about uh, two and a half years ago. It's a fabulous tool, and if you haven't used it, I really highly encourage you to do so. But I've created this Live Binder, um, and I'm very excited to, to share that um, although it doesn't have a huge, tremendous amount of hits, um, we have now over 3,000 folks that have looked at um, this binder and have seen it as a resource that um, is useful. So first of all, you'll find when you come to this Live Binder, you'll see that I have moved out of the wiki that I used for two years and moved into a Google site. I really enjoyed using my wiki, but I really believe that the power of utilizing a Google site as I'm on Google for um, most of my work and really love it. You know, I'm not getting paid by, from Google, but it's a, it's a great opportunity. So I created a Google site, and if you visit the site, you'll see that I have archives, I have the communities there, um, and many other resources. So that's the first thing you'll see when you come to the Life Finder. And here's something that's very important that um, Peggy and I and Lorna were talking about in terms of uh, introducing those that might not be familiar with uh, a Twitter chat or even on Twitter that I wanted you to, to have and see when you visit the binder. One of, the, power, one of the, the pieces of social media that's so powerful is if you're not comfortable yet jumping into Twitter, which some folks might not be, you can go to a, a web-based application called TweetChat. And even though you're not on Twitter, you can watch any chat that flows by as long as you have the hashtag for that chat. And I really think that TweetChat is brilliant in terms of that piece. So for, for example, if you're uncomfortable joining Twitter or you're not on Twitter or you want to share with a new teacher about the idea of joining Twitter to then push them to join um, new teacher chat, they can go to this TweetChat room and see all of the chats that are connected to the hashtag NT chat. And just remember, for those that are unfamiliar with it, the hashtag is what curates the information that is in a chat or in an activity. For example, for this month of poetry, um, the um, folks at poetry.org have a hashtag developed to curate all the chats that come forward this month discussing poetry. And so I believe it's um, uh, MPW or National Poetry Month, NPM13. Uh, so hashtags are very powerful. And they're not only used for chats, but they're used for hundreds of thousands of other things. But they connect and curate all the folks, all the people on Twitter that are talking about that particular subject, or in this case, the chat. So you can go to tweetchat.com backslash room, backslash NT chat, and watch the chat from the comfort of your living room or the comfort of wherever you happen to be, and it could be in your bedroom, and see the vibrancy of what new teacher chat is all about. If you are on Twitter, you can sign in using your Twitter protocols and actually utilize the tweet chat room as opposed to being in Twitter or in TweetDeck, which is something that a lot of us love to use or um, other clients that use um, columns. I really think the vibrancy of TweetChat is powerful because, again, if you're not on Twitter and you want to share it, perhaps you're a coach who wants to share the power of a chat, or you're a principal or administrator that wants to share with your teachers the power of a chat, and again, in this case, is showing the power of what new teacher chat can do to support you as a new teacher, you can do that through the power of the TweetChat um, application. So highly recommend that you uh, seek out TweetChat and, and um, take advantage of um, the power that it has to enable you to join a chat, even if you're not ready to jump into Twitter. Quickly, i talk a little bit here about how New Teacher Chat was born. Here is my page where I'm sharing, yay, my monthly come up, and you're going to hear from them soon. This is a place where I show that um, we have had guest moderators, and we're always looking for folks that would like to join us who have a message for new teachers, and I welcome you to join us, and if you're interested in doing that, please um, email, me, email me or tweet at me and let me know if you'd like to be a guest moderator because you have something powerful to share regarding support for new teachers. 
here is where I archived the chats on um, my Google site. And for years, I was using what the hashtag. Then I moved to a Google Doc, and now I'm using Storify to um, archive the chats. And you can go in there. I'm not going to go into the detail about what Storify can do, but you can go in there and you can see all the archives um, for the chat. And you can actually download them, play around with them, um, do what you would like with them. Here is the community that um, I built uh, most recently on Google Plus. And I invite all of you that have an interest in supporting new teachers to join us there. Here is the community for um, New Teacher Chat on Facebook. And we're almost at 500 um, likes and people collaborating and joining there. And I hope to have that become more vibrant as my uh, co-mods uh, become administrators there in that Facebook page. I'm very, very excited about using Pinterest, as millions of people are around the world. And so I have developed uh, Pinterest boards that are most of the time detailed and supportive for new teachers in general. I really don't put things in there about what I like to wear or what I like to dress, except I do have a board that talks about what uh, teachers might want to uh, look at in terms of style and dress for men and women. But I'm um, really loving uh, Pinterest and what it can do to support new teachers. And again, you don't have to be on Pinterest to access um, the Pinterest boards. You just need to go to uh, my account where it says click here. And then you can see all the boards that I'm curating. I developed a line of width, which has ideas that people have used. It's like a sticky board. And you can uh, freely cut and paste ideas that you might have for the chat. Feel free to do that when you go there. We have <clears throat> a wall wisher that um, also has ideas and responses regarding tips for pre-service teachers. Feel free to go there and see that. <clears throat> About two years ago, I developed a new teacher first year YouTube channel, which is a little bit different from my personal channel. It talks about um, things that new teachers um, might want to think about. And I've had some guest folks who have uploaded their, their um, message to a new teacher. And I really need to do more with that. So if you're interested in giving a message, a video message to a new teacher, let me know. Record a little two-minute video, and I'd be happy to upload your message to how you would like to support a new teacher or a message that you have for doing so. Here is the project that I talked about a few minutes ago that is on um, the EDU PLN. And what it is is the New Teacher Mentoring Project. And in the EDL PL, uh, EDU PLN, and you can also access this on the my blog, teachingisol.com. If you're a new teacher who wants to find a mentor, there is a Google Doc there with a list of over 175 people who are willing to mentor for free. And so uh, do take a moment if you're interested in that and check out the Teacher Mentoring Project on the EDU PLN or also at my site. Here is an article I wrote for Edutopia on 20 tips for new teachers, which I was very excited that it was so successful um, when we celebrated our 20 years at edutopia.org that the Huffington Post actually picked it up and ran it um, on their blog. And I actually developed a presentation from that, which I'm going, which I have shared and which I'm hoping would get accepted as an Ignite at ISTE this year. Here is the new teacher uh, group that I moderate on edutopia.org. And um, you can click on that. I'm not going to take the time to do that because I know we have things we still want to share. Oh, there it is. It's popping up. And if you're a new teacher, you can join us. You can post questions. I do my best to answer them. And other folks that are in the edutopia.org New Teacher Connections group also will respond. And um, we're going to be doing some very exciting things at edutopia.org in the next six months. So please stay tuned. And if you aren't a member of edutopia.org, I highly recommend that you create an account there and join us. There are tremendous, vibrant resources there. Uh, not only for new teachers, but administrators, experienced teachers, technology folks. And you know, this is my big plug here for HSW.org. And you know, George Lucas's message is changing the world one kid at a time. And you know, we're really beginning to do that now in a more vibrant way now that we're online. Again, quickly, here is um, my blog, teachingwithsoul.com, where I primarily blog about my support for new and pre-service teachers. So I'm going to stop the application sharing and go back to our presentation. And using social media, as you know, for um, support and mentoring to new teachers is very critical to me. And I'd like to have um, Natasha Dunn take a couple of minutes and share about her experience 
with um, New Teacher Chat and how she feels that it's important for new teachers to consider using social media to mentor themselves. Hi everybody. Um, Lisa, just before I get started, um, there was a question while you were sharing your um, your screen there about searching. Um, can you search by topic or keyword on any of the pages or sites that you just shared? Well, you know what? Why don't we save that question for the end? Because I really want um, our folks that are here today to hear from you, Natasha. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, my name is Natasha Dunn, and I am a grade five teacher in Halton, Ontario. Um, I actually got connected with the NT Chat on Twitter when I was doing my pre-service um, teaching at Brock University. Um, one of our teachers there for the tech course was very um, Twitter savvy, I guess, and had us all signed up for Twitter. Um, and I sort of just jumped right on board and connected with um, Lisa and other folks at the NT Chat. Um, I don't know, when I, when I graduated at Brock, I was really into creating something on um, using technology and using the Web 2.0. So a friend of mine and I, we started, somebody posted there, uh, the rookieteacher.ca. Um, and it was really through there that I saw the power of um, how NT Chat and new teachers could come together. Um, and it was really validating for me that my concerns and my passion for education was um, was was taken uh, very well with uh, folks at NT Chat. So every Wednesday, I was happy to sit around my computer and um, talk with other folks about some great things, uh, new, hip, and happening, I guess, in in education and Twitter. Um, I don't know. Was there was there anything else that uh, that I missed there? No, Natasha, that's awesome because I really wanted um, new teachers that are here, and I know we have a few joining us, to know how you joined us. And then I really wanted to also um, thank you for being willing in your busy day, as you are still a somewhat new teacher, but very savvy and very able um, to, to guide others as you join me um, in the chat on Wednesday nights. And, and I'm so grateful to you. And if there are questions for Natasha later, uh, please feel free to put those in the chat because she's doing some tremendous things in her own work with the rookie teacher in Canada. So thank you, Natasha. Next, I want to be able to hear a little bit from um, my very good friend, Dean Nance. And um, this slide is important because one of the things um, I, that we hear a lot from, um, from colleagues face to face is, well, you know, why should I bother? To connect, you know, I'm so busy, I don't have the time. You know, what's the validation in that? What's the value in that? And as a new teacher, I mean, come on, you know, I'm so busy. So, um, Dean, would you share a little bit with um, our group that's here today about um, how we connected and what you see as the value of connecting um, via social media, particularly as you work um, with your pre-service teachers? And thank you, Dean, for being here. Well, thank you for the invite, and thank you for everybody here in Classroom 2.0. Um, to give you a little background, the way Lisa and I connected was actually courtesy of uh, Tina and Barbara at LiveBinders.com. I uh, co-host a monthly web show with those ladies as well, and we actually use this same setup with Classroom 2.0 for our shows, and it was a year ago that we had uh, Lisa on to talk about new teachers and what she was doing with it because, as she said, I work with pre-service students. I'm also a uh, network coordinator and integration specialist for the public schools. I've been teaching for 20 years. Uh, this is my sixth year of working with college students. And Lisa's passion for wanting to work with the new young teachers just fit hand in hand with you know, the drive I have to work with college students. And it's, as you see in this diagram, when you talk about the collaborate, empower, and communicate, all of those students out there, they, they have a certain mindset from their own learning experience of what, how they're going to teach. 
in a lot of ways, there's so a lot of people are scared in, oh my gosh, what am I going to do the first day of school? And they become so overwhelmed and stressed out that you try to take the approach of showing them, hey, you're not going to know the answers, I'm not going to know all the answers, but I guarantee you we can find the answer from someone. And that's where we kind of pull in the social networking side, whether it be through a Ning site or Twitter chats or Skype, Google Plus, you know, Classroom Tour webinars. And that's the whole big thing. And then here in a little bit, I'm going to put two diagrams from Flickr that actually come from Alec Carroll's in Canada, who's an education uh, professor at the college level working with college students, and it gives you two visuals of what would a typical network teacher looks like and then what a network teacher should look like in today's environment. But the big thing is, is, you know, as we try to work with those students that become teachers, we want them to be able to, in turn, be able to show their students you know, there is more to this world than what's inside the classroom walls. You know, let's connect. Let's do a mystery Skype. Let's uh, do a collaborative document with somebody in another culture and all of that. And that's the big thing is to just, you know, the flat classroom project. Um, it's that whole concept is making it everybody aware of different cultures, different beliefs, and having a true understanding of it and not just letting television and the news shape your mind. Thank you, Jean. That was awesome. And I really love your passion for um, what you do um, when you do your shows with um, the LifeBinders gals who I just adore. And thank you so much for uh, your message today. And I want to be able to also hear from one of my co-mods, which I hope um, she's still in the room. And she is, yay, um, who is Jamie Vandergrift. And um, this lead-in from what Dean and I were talking about earlier is um, the power to develop a personal learning network, And uh, as we talked about before. And as we connect with each other uh, in social media, beyond face-to-face, -face, developing that personal learning network is so important. And you know, it can start with something on Facebook. It can start with something that you do um, in a mean site, it can start with something that you do on your blog. But for those of us that love Twitter, as Natasha, Jamie, Dean, and I do, um, we say it starts with a tweet. And so, um, did Jamie actually uh, leave the room, or is she still here? Because I'd love for her to share um, her experience with building a PLN and why new teachers should work towards this focus. So, Jamie, are you still here? Jamie, just press the talk button to begin speaking if you have a mic. Can you hear me? We sure can. Oh, good. It's been a frustrating day with technology. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to talk about developing um, a personal learning network because I, um, I've really, I've moved around a lot and um, I have lived in um, outside of Baltimore, outside of Chicago outside of um, Dallas, and now I'm um, outside of Atlanta. And in every move I made before this one, I feel like I started over every single time. I didn't have anybody that I knew. I didn't, I didn't have any connections. It really was me starting over. But the difference was when I moved to Atlanta, I had been on Twitter for almost two years, and it was almost like I was moving here, and I already had a whole entire network behind me, people that were helping me find jobs, people that were directing me, um, and it really was, it, it was so comforting just to know this was um, kind of to back me up. And Twitter is a wonderful place. I have been able to have tons of connections made that way. And when I got here, one of the best things was, you know, I'd already met these people, and they started inviting me to do things. And um, one of the things we did, and Lisa talked a lot about Google, um, I went to the Google Apps for Education Summit. Um, there were a lot of people from Atlanta that had said, hey, come out to this. And so I met up with even more people 
that were on Twitter. And after that, um, we had a, a Google Hangout kind of a decompress kind of thing where we just wanted to talk about what we had learned and how we were going to take that back to, you know, whatever we were doing, teaching or coaching or leading. And um, when we started talking about that, we, we kind of realized we had a really good connection. So um, Kat Slippin, Stacey McFadden, and Kate Matthews and I, we started an on-air hangout show called Edge of You. And we did that because I have been working with teachers for a little while now and I find that often it's a little scary because um, Twitter, Twitter can be intimidating for teachers and, and when I talk to teachers who are, are trying to encourage to build a professional learning network, their biggest um, drawbacks are that they just don't feel comfortable doing this. They, they don't really know how to address it. They don't feel comfortable doing it. And even though there's so many resources out there to get people started, we thought, you know, how can we help people to, to develop a professional learning network? And so Edgeview was kind of that, that idea. Um, because while a teacher can be teaching for 20 years, with instructional technology, um, those teachers can still almost be like a new teacher. Everything's changing in their classroom. Everything's changing around them. And, and so it is really just important to understand that um, new teachers are learning a lot of new things, but older teachers are also learning a lot of new things, and that's scary. So EduView has allowed us to do on-air hangouts, invite guests. In fact, Peggy will be our guest. That's a, since you're here, you'll now get to have that little teaser. Peggy's going to be our guest um, coming up hopefully in May or June. Um, and we get to bring people in from Twitter onto our show. And we open up it for Twitter questions. We open up for a lot of different questions from different people. But we want them to be able to kind of see these great people in, in technology and see these great people on Twitter. There's so many great teachers out there. And sometimes 140 characters gets a little scary. <laughs> and, and you don't really feel like you can make those connections. But what Edge of View has allowed us to do is, is bring those people um, kind of face to face to allow us to see them. And it's really been a great opportunity for us to help people um, build a, a professional learning network a little differently than just Twitter. Um, and we've had such great feedback from it. I love what people are saying is that they've really felt connected. We've had um, Dr. Chris Kraft on. We've had Christy Vincent. Lisa was um, one of our guests. And people just say, you know, it's so great to be able to connect with those people and see those people and, and feel like, you know, we're comfortable enough now to, to maybe send a tweet to them or, or send an email. And so it, it's really been a great opportunity for us to find another way to maybe ease people into developing a professional learning network because it, it truly is just a really scary place. Jamie, thank you so much. And um, one of the things that I really admired about Jamie is that when she knew she was making this big move from um, one part of the country to the other, um, she just so bravely uh, reached out to me actually on LinkedIn, which is a community that we haven't really talked about much. But um, it, it can be a place where people can connect. It is becoming a little more Facebook-like. Uh, I don't really spend much time in LinkedIn, but I have a lot of people that love to connect there, and I'm really uh, grateful to them for that. But I was really grateful to Jamie for uh, reaching out to me. And, and at some point, I think I actually dropped the ball, and, and I wasn't able to get back to her. And she was so uh, gracious and said, you know, Lisa, that's all right. I know how busy you are. But what I'm really proud about um, her is that she has just begun to blossom and grow and develop. And I know that she would give credit as she has to the fact that she's been able to connect with um, people like myself and, and Dean and her colleagues in, in Atlanta. And I really think that um, for a new teacher to develop the power of a PLN is huge because you never know when that person that you've connected with offers or is offering a job in their district, in their school, in their um, company, in their startup, that you would be eager to join. And because you have taken the time to really nurture those conversations, nurture the development of that personal learning network, you are going to be able to go to the top of the pile of 300 teachers that are going to be looked at. And really, I see that it's going to make a, a huge difference. And I know that we're quickly running out of time. So one of the last things that I just want to share with you all today is that 
Um, replacing the fear of the unknown with curiosity is something, a message that I'm really constantly sharing. And um, even colleagues of mine, principal colleagues and teacher colleagues that I still connect with on Facebook who aren't on Twitter or in a meme site or venturing into a Google Plus community really keep scratching their heads and saying, well, why would I bother to do that? You know, that scares me or I don't have time for that or, you know, I, I how, you know, Lisa, why, why should I bother to do that? And I really feel bad for them because if they took that step beyond the fear of the unknown and, and really began to look at what the power of their curiosity could do that they might have had when they were a child in terms of venturing out beyond their comfort zone, which is really what I think we need to do to develop ourselves as educators, move beyond the comfort zone of our community, of our state, of our country, and move out into the world and connect with people, um, again, like Shambles and others who are here today, and, and um, that it's just going to not only um, invigorate our teaching, but it's going to make our teaching so much richer. And that teaching is what is critical to becoming or to being, and, you know, forgive me for using this phrase, but, you know, um, a um, 21st century educator. So if you can yourself take that step and encourage others to take that step, I really believe that there's power in doing that. And I want to thank um, Classroom 2.0 Live and my co-moderators for being here today. And I want to thank all of you for being here and listening to our message. And I hope that you will consider um, supporting and mentoring a new teacher, supporting and mentoring a new teacher to grow into social media, and supporting and mentoring yourself if you're not someone that's currently in an insider on Twitter or in um, uh, Facebook or on a Google Plus community. And give it a try. And know that if you do that, reach out to Natasha, Jamie, Dean, uh, and Derek, who couldn't be with us, and these fabulous women that are here uh, in Crash and Tubin All Live. We will be ha happy to be your social media mentor. And thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe I took down just one question that may not have been addressed, and that was the one about um, when you're searching through your Twitter chat archives, are you able to search for keywords or key topics? Kim, yes, I believe that you can. Uh, you can um, see that in the, the Google Docs where I had my previous archives. And then in terms of Storify, I believe that you can also search for keywords and, and look for them within the context of Storify. But I, could not, I, I couldn't um, be sure of that. But uh, it um, certainly is a much more vibrant way to archive a chat than the Google Doc that I, I used to do. So um, hoping that kind of answers the question. Great. I know there were probably more questions that I missed when I couldn't get in, but I'm going to go ahead and officially close out the show. It is the top of the hour, and we want to be mindful of your time, and we appreciate that. But we invite everybody to stick around and continue to ask questions if you have any. Let me go ahead and, oh, my apologies. We'll come back to the questioning in just a bit. But we want to let you know that Steve Harganon, on April 16th, he's going to be interviewing Franz Johansson. And on April 17th, he'll be talking with Elliot Washer and Charles. And Charles. And April 23rd, he will be talking with Jim Popham. And those sessions are at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can always check out the archives and follow what he's doing at futureofeducation.com. We want to let you know that next week we're not going to need to have a session so that everybody can join the DEN Spring Virtual Conference. And the link to join, I believe, is in the uh, live binder as well as Peggy just posted it in the chat. It's going to be a great session. 
I believe it starts at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So uh, keep that in mind. And there are lots of live sessions that you can participate in to support that conference. So we won't meet, but we will be back on April 27th with Trisha Fugelstad. She's going to be our future, our featured teacher of April. And she's an art teacher, extraordinaire, and fantastic. So you're going to want to uh, join us for that session, even if you don't teach art. And May 4th, we're going to have Heidi Befort, Befort, I apologize, who is going to be our featured teacher for May. So those are great sessions. And even if you're not in the uh, lower grades, there will still be great ideas that you can modify to meet your content area or grade level. And there's more information about the Spring Virtual Conference, and that's the link to join and register so that you can participate and find out about all the things going on. We would love for you to nominate a featured teacher for a future session. The link is um, in our live binder, and it's posted right now in the session. You can click on it and then save that link, or you can just access it from our website or live binder at any time. As soon as you exit today's session, a survey link will open. You don't have to do anything. It automatically does that for you. And we would love to get your feedback on today's session. And anytime you watch one of the recordings, you can also use that survey link to request a professional development certificate, as well as one for today in that survey link. All you need to do is put in your email address and your name, and Peggy sends those out. So give us a bit to get that to you, and we will get that out in the, your email. We want to let you know that we have an iTunes U channel so that if you are missed part of a session or you just like to hear it again, you can subscribe to the video collection, the MP3s and the MP4s or the audio, either one or both, so that you can take us with you wherever you go. And you can also subscribe through a regular RSS feed through any um, RSS feed aggregator that you would like. And then you would get all the resources and the video recordings as well. And that's where we post all of our resources after every session on our blog on our website page. We want to extend a very special thanks to everybody who um, presented today and spoke. Lisa Dabbs, all of the her co-moderators and guests, Natasha, James, and Dean, everybody that has particip participated. We're very thankful for that, as well as to Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of Classroom 2.0 and our 2.0 Live series. Um, that's a good question, uh, McTeach, since Google Reader's gone. Um, of what kind of RSS uh, feed aggregators people are using. And we want to thank Weebly for allowing us to publish our website and the blog post for everybody, as well as to each of you for posting your content, questions, chat, and everything today, and Blackboard for allowing us to meet each week. And normally, we do not have these difficulties. so. If you're brand new, please don't feel uh, intimidated to join us again if you had trouble getting in because uh, normally these difficulties are not um, what we experience. And you can check our archives for all of the past topics. We've been doing this for four or five years. So I'm sure there's something there uh, for everybody on our uh, blog page of our website. And that is in the uh, Live Binder link. And let me post the live binder link. And as you can see from the chat here about Shambles and the Teach, we have a lot of people um, that are regulars that attend our sessions. So let's go back to questions. And if you have a question that hasn't been addressed, we encourage you to type them in the chat. Or we can give you the mic, and you can ask them directly. And Lori, were there any questions that I missed? Yes, I, I wasn't in the. I did catch right. only only a couple. Um, the one has to do with pre the or the president's.
pre-K initiative, any hope of extending discussions, resources, linkages, um, like the grade level at Edutopia to encompass uh, birth to five educators. Lori, that's a that's a great question. Our predominant, um, you know, because we run a lot of data in edutopia.org, and I'm I'm grateful to uh, the question asker who's interested in what we're doing there. Uh, and we run a lot of data and statistics uh, yearly, and um, here and there throughout the year, we have tremendous researchers on staff who look at the data of who accesses edutopia.org and who uses the resources and and whatnot. And the predominant group of educators who go there are not um, uh, early educators. They are educators who typically are uh, third grade teachers um, on up. They are administrators. Um, they are a small group of new teachers. Believe it or not, there aren't as many as I would hope. And then there are a small a sprinkling now of parents joining. In terms of including that group in um, the future, as Edutopia is going to be undergoing a, a powerful transformation. Uh, I would invite you to join edutopia.org now and set up an account there and post that question. And I know that uh, either Betty Ray, who is our community manager there, she manages the entire site, um, can either answer your question or direct your question to somebody that can. But I think it's a great question. I myself am a child development major and taught preschool for um, five years and kindergarten for five years. So I understand the passion that we have for um, um, early education and, the, and its importance, uh, not only in this country, but around the world. So I'd be happy to also, um, if you give me um, an opportunity, I can also um, ask that question of Betty Ray. If you would um, send me your email, I'd be happy to uh, forward that to her and, and see if I can get a response. And Thank before you. you go to the next question, Lori, um, mm -hmm. Julian Castro is the mayor of San Antonio, and he also spoke um, at the Democratic National Convention on behalf of our current President Obama. Um, and he just recently proposed legislation for the city of San Antonio um, since Head Start was having some difficulties to mandate that all students be able to attend a pre-K program mm -hmm. and that every campus offer pre-K um, and not just because here in San Antonio, I'm not sure how it is everywhere, but it was more for the um, at risk or... Mm -hmm. um, that tends to be Head Start, yeah. Yeah, the um, lower income families, but they he proposed that, that every student be able to attend. So, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the legislation passed and they're working on the funding and implementing that program in every campus and every district in San Antonio. Um, so, I'm thinking that that's going to become more of a trend and a national concern. So, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that in. Thanks, Kim. The only other question I captured was, do you have geographic statistics for the new teacher chat users? Is it global? Is it mostly the United States? Yes, sorry. Um, great question. It is mostly in the United States, being that I am really um, um, even though my monthly commons are with me, they join only once a month as they have time. So, you know, really I'm a, I'm a one-woman show. And because of that, uh, I don't have the capacity to run an international new teacher chat. So because of the fact that it's Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time and 8 p.m. Eastern time, it's a, it's a hard sell for our international uh, folks mm -hmm. that want to join us. We do have international uh, new teachers joining us, and we've had a couple of professors um, from um, India join us uh, at times. But really, right now, um, it is a um, national um, United States, and you know our folks in Canada can typically join us as well. But in the future, it would be great to be able to extend internationally. Um, but for now, at least the resources are there to to provide um, insight and and um, opportunities to join, as well as the Facebook page and the Google Plus community. Thank you.
And Lauren, was that all that you were able to capture? Thanks, Kim. That's all, I, all that we're not asked, yeah. Great, or already answered. Thank you so much for that. Um, so if you have a question that we have not addressed, then please uh, post it in the chat or raise your hand and we'll give you the mic. And we want to make sure that you have all the information that you need in case there's a question after the session that you think of. I know that that happens to me sometimes. Um, so you can contact us and all of Lisa's information and contact information is in the live binder. So if something comes up later, feel free. Of course, you can always contact her on Twitter as well as Dean is an active. All of them are active uh, tweeters as well as uh, Peggy, Lauren, and I as, um, as well. So um, if you have a question, we want to give you one last opportunity to do so. And like Natasha just did, feel free to post your Twitter name in the chat here. Uh, then when people go through the archives, they can subscribe uh, to your Twitter feed and follow you. And we can connect that way on Twitter. Um, I know in the live binder, and it was already posted earlier, about all the different educational chats. Um, I know the DEN for Texas does stuff, and the DEN Discovery Education has a Thursday night Twitter chat. Um, I believe it's at 7 or 8 p.m. Central Time. So all of those, um, uh, be sure to join. OK, 7, good, thank you. I couldn't remember. 7 Central for uh, Thursday evenings, but there's stuff just about every evening, and that's why Tweet Chat is a great source. And I also use TweetGrid uh, for some other uh, Twitter chats that I participate in from different communities, not always educational communities. But thank you so much for everybody participating today and those who had difficulty getting in. I'm glad that you were able to make them get into the session. Um, as soon as everybody logs out, we will post the recordings to our website and post it on Twitter that they are available now. So be watching for that. And we thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And enjoy the Den conference next Saturday. Um, Dean, are you presenting next Saturday? I haven't checked the schedule. Oh, you're not? Okay. So Dean is one of the uh, Den gurus. So um, he's very involved in the den as well. But regardless, please join us back on April 27th for another featured teacher session. And fill out the featured teacher form. You can nominate yourself as well as any educator that works with students or works with teachers and educators of any kind. We love to uh, see your nominations as well as your uh, feedback and comments on our survey. So please take time to do that as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and have a great night. Shambles, since I know it's midnight or 1 a.m. there. And take care, everybody. See you online and see you on the 27th. Take care. Bye-bye.